Oh, I'm not bleeping anything. Oh, <laughs> but, but we'll get demonetized. All right, Clay, I got something I got to propose to you. Okay. All right. I've got this idea, and it's it's a slasher film. Now, hear me out. Okay. I know slasher films can be a little mm, passe, a little derivative, maybe. Yeah, done to death. But I've got a great idea. Okay. So okay. I was helping, hoping you could try to get some of your Savannah College alumni in here. Okay. And perhaps we can film a slasher film, a slasher movie with some of your non acting Savannah people. And okay. we can create, and they're going to go out into the woods of Georgia and they're going to make a movie about a slasher. Uh, look, we, it, it's going to be great. I, I've got this whole script written up and think of Lord of the Rings. Okay. Epic slasher adventures. It's going to be about two and a half hours long. And okay. all I need is about 150 million. Okay. That's ambitious. Um, instead you can have about 25,000 and, uh, you know, I can't help you with the staff. Mm, okay. I guess I'll just go to Virginia and just hopefully dig up someone in that area. Yeah. That sounds like, that sounds like what, uh, a, a, a kind of a neat lead into the film we're getting ready to review. Well, I, I know that's, it's very coincidental, by the way, that had nothing to do with the film that we watched. Of course, you know, this is, this is a truly a dream that I do have in the works, but okay, yeah, well, it is, it is coincidental. Never call me a dream killer. I hate it. <laughs> uh, so th this is Cinematic Suffering, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Uh, I'm, J I'm J yeah, I was about to say I'm Clay. I'm not Clay. I'm Jason. That's Clay over there. I'm Clay, I'm and you're Clay. Jason. Yeah. I'm, and I'm and, Jason, definitely. And we are Cinematic Suffering, and what we do on this station, this station, this mm -hmm. channel, this little FM. pathway to the internet that you found is that we review and make fun of horror movies. We're all about the horror movies here on Cinematic Suffering. And this week, we're bringing you Get Away. Get and, Away. Yeah, yeah. we have to emphasize Get Away because it's J... It's J what's going on with my spelling here? G-E-T, G-E-T, <laughs> G -E -T, and then Away is all capitalized. So it's very different from the other movie that came out in 2020 of the same name uh, in, in the horror genre where a bunch of people go out into the woods and <laughs> experience yeah. horrible things. Yeah, like it's um, every time that I sought out this movie to do research for this episode of the podcast it took me about five minutes to find the right one because <laughs> so many other people thought to call their horror movie getaway before these folks got to it and it's extra baffling because the film is not about a getaway at all in any way no. it, 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 you could have called it i don't know cinematics suffering if the, that name wasn't taken uh getaway uh like maybe they're thinking like you see a person running from a killer and you just want them to get away. Maybe that's maybe they're, that might've been, I don't know. I, I, we can't get into the, the director's head and really filter out what he was thinking on this because it is a very deep and moving picture that has, that is filled with <laughs> dips and turns and uh, in, incredible in, plot moments. Yes. Yes. Not, not a, not a single wart or pimple to be found on this, uh, unblemished masterpiece this unparalleled work of creative genius that we got to give the right credit uh, it was written and directed by the one and only blaine weaver the and if one you're thinking and only yeah and if you're thinking who the hell is that um well might i suggest you check out his masterwork santa girl if you aren't familiar yes. with santa girl then maybe you don't like movies my friend. yeah bravo santa girl a piece de resistance of filmmaking and <laughs> a true auteur piece where Blaine was just in the area of Shenandoah, Virginia. And I think that's a city <laughs> or a place, right? I know it's a university. Um, so, <laughs> yes. And, and he was doing this, this Christmas movie called Santa girl. And you might think to yourself, Jason play Santa girl has to be a horror film because obviously this guy just directed a horror film, but no, everyone would be in incredibly incorrect yeah it was a purely beautiful movie about you know santa and a girl who, who likes girls yeah. yeah 
We assume no. Santa likes girls. He's married after all, right? I mean, he could yeah. be into other things. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it could, could be. I bet Santa's into all kinds of weird stuff. I bet he and, and, <laughs> and Mrs. Claus like to are into the lifestyle, if you know what I mean. Yeah, ab- absolutely. They have a little elf uh, BDSM room that they <laughs> Yeah. <have. laughs> I've, I've said the safe word so many times. Free me, free me. <laughs> Yeah, so Blaine Weaver is our director, our, our alter here, and yes. appa- apparently he got this gig through Santa Girl, in a way. Oh, uh, I'm not sure. I, I, you know, I don't know why this film exists. I don't. I it's <laughs> it's one of the many baffling questions. It's the same baffling question that we seem to ask ourselves every time we watch a movie like this. Why does it exist? How did you get people to to make it? How did you get people to give you money to make it? If you don't want to make a movie, then don't make one. <laughs> right. <laughs> this uh, this is a a dream job for Blaine, I believe, because you know he just got finished working on Santa Girl, and according to my sources in the <laughs> industry, yes. which happens to be YouTube. <laughs> or that, IMDb. Or IMDb. It, it looks like that he had filmed Santa Girl in Sh- in Shenandoah, in the Shenandoah Valley or wherever in Virginia that is. And he was actually going to do another movie and all the funding fell through for that movie. And then the people who were funding said movie, like Santa Girl and everything, well, what do you have else? What, what do you do? You have anything else sitting around that you want to make? And then Blaine was like, well, I've got this the slasher flick that I've been writing that's been sitting in my desk for about 10 years. I guess we can do that. And <laughs> they are like, okay, here's some money. And they gave it to him. And I, I by money, I I'm, I'm assuming it's about tens of hundreds of dollars. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you know, not enough to buy a new Mazda three, but you can get a used one from 2010 probably with, with the amount of money that I don't know the exact, uh, <laughs> I don't know the exact cost, but the basic premise of the movie is that uh, these film students are doing their final project and they're going to do a slasher movie out in the woods. It seems like this very typical setup. Um, The way they kind of usurp expectation is that it has almost nothing to do with filmmaking at all. And instead, it's just about young people bickering at one another and with high pitched shrill voices and then they start to murder one another off if it wasn't for the killer actually filming their crime i don't think that there would be any movie making happening on this set <laughs> right yeah so that was the perhaps i think the overall premise of the movie was to be a meta sort of a metal meta look at filmmaking and maybe underground filmmaking in a, in a way and i let me give some props to the filmmaking process because I, I did listen to an interview that with Blaine Weaver and that was on oh, okay it was on uh, West Styles U- YouTube channel it's called the oh. Styles Cast okay and they went into probably pretty much the entire and it's about a forty minute u- interview and yeah he talked about you know the guerrilla style filmmaking that happened that you know the I don't believe there are any really permits in place to film anywhere <laughs> that they they stayed at several different campgrounds throughout. The weekends because the kids who were in the movie were actually students at Shenandoah University and they had to go to school during the week and they would film this on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I kind of, I kind of like that movie aesthetic. Uh, I've done it myself and it, it was brutal work, especially in the conditions it was freezing cold for them. And, you know, he's pouring fake cold blood on them in <laughs> probably like 20 degree weather. And yeah. I can feel for the artwork, you know, the, I can feel the love that goes into something like that and the willingness to do this. Yeah. And I, I give mad props to that kind of filmmaking. Sometimes the overall product that comes out at the very end isn't exactly what you're looking for. And I think that's what we found with Get Away. <laughs> well, and it, if you're from what you're telling me, it was a 10 year old script. I mean, golly, I hope he punched it up a little bit. I mean, it's what whatever you wrote 10 years ago <laughs> might not be that good now. <laughs> well, apparently the, the actors did punch up the script for him because there are things oh. there are things that were written in there. And the actors were like, this is something we would never say. And so, he's yeah, like, oh, yeah, we'll punch it up, you know, do what you need to do. So he was very open to the actors actually modifying his script. So okay, I thought that, was, okay. that was cool, too. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it's one of those movies that my brain tries to kick out 
the minute I saw it, like, we're not going to need that. We need those valuable hard drive space for, I don't know, you know, uh, <laughs> Masters of the Universe trivia or something. Right. You know? So it's, get out of here. Like, I had to rewatch part of it and was like, OK, I've almost forgotten <laughs> a big chunk of this movie. Like, I, I just couldn't get it to I just couldn't get my my aging brain to remember. I just I just snorted laughing there because this is about what a week <laughs> after the fact that we've seen yeah. we saw it. So we've had enough yeah. time to really stew, and I really wanted to go back and do some research myself, just because yeah, again yeah. we hadn't seen it in about a week, so things do kind of fade out of what. Yeah, it is. yeah. So I had to go back and rewatch some th certain things, and then do my own, do my own new YouTube YouTube research. I got most of this uh, <laughs> West Styles uh, YouTube channel is just him yelling inside of a truck, but occasionally he does <laughs> settle down <laughs> and talk to other people. Um, but yeah. <laughs> The old the, the the guy in a truck giving his opinions to a GoPro <laughs> is a is a well trodden lane and on YouTube. It's, it's classic. That's how I get most of my information, at least. <laughs> but uh, get get away was, I think for us it was fun to make fun of. I know that. Yeah, uh, oh I yeah, hell a, yeah. I, I had a really good time just riffing on it while we were watching it. There was the, I guess the plot, if there is <laughs> any semblance of one, is that. And I didn't really catch this at the beginning. I guess this girl, Maggie, is that her name? The the lead character? Yeah. I guess lead. I, I'm kind of quoting because I wasn't really I wasn't really sure who the lead character was because they kept yeah. switching. Um had a bad breakup and thought it would be cool just to go out on this film retreat with a bunch of kids doing a, a student film or they're gonna film a horror movie out in the middle of this campground. And so she tags along to try to get over oh shit. About ate my microphone there, <laughs> <Crap>. <laughs> and it was to try to get over, I guess, her uh, breakup situation. You know, sure, yeah. why not? And then it kind of rolls down from there with just people yelling and bickering at each other, <laughs> and not just... really getting anything done. <laughs> Yeah, like I didn't see like no one was like, hey, do we want to set up some lights, maybe, you know, kind of work on some sound, do film student stuff. They were everyone in this movie was so shitty to one another. And I know that a movie needs drama between the characters, but it was just a phalanx of <laughs> just <laughs> just snark. Everybody was so shitty to one another. Like, hey, I heard you're doing a slasher film for your for your final. Like, yeah, like even in the uh trailer. It just yeah. everyone's shitty. They're so shitty to one another. The the producer thinks she's the best producer in the world, even though she hasn't produced anything. They're supposed to have no. a mask for the killer, and uh, you think you'd have a mask for the killer. You think yeah. you'd have something lined up, but apparently they drive out into the country. Someone says stop, and they find a scarecrow that has like a what a burlap hood on, and says, "Oh, yeah. I think I found her killer mask." It's like, shouldn't you have had this taken care of like weeks ago? If you, that. So yeah. I was I was complaining about that as far as the movie making things because it's supposed to be meta movie movie making but maybe the maybe Mr. Weaver was trying to uh, exaggerate certain things that happen within guerrilla filmmaking but I don't uh, know. I you know like if that was the intention it, it fell short because I never felt like there was a film within a film at all I just yeah. felt like we were just watching people arguing and then you know once. Like everyone was so unlikable that once the killer start does show up, you're just like you're unmoved. It's like yeah, yeah. kill them all. I, I, <laughs> it was a wasted opportunity. I think it would have been funny if like there were if everybody was the killer. Like wait a minute, yeah. I'm the killer. Like all their e none of their egos would allow somebody else to be the killer. So they're that all would, the killer. That, that would, would be great. an amazing concept, dude. I, I'm just picking yeah. in my head. I mean, I don't I. That would be an amazing. I, I we should write up a script. Let's do it. Let's, oh, uh, it, uh, yeah. Like let's trademark that, that shit. Well, that's the thing. It's like, and you know, like I, I admittedly didn't do the same level of research that you did, and you can, it, it can kind of temper your, um, like your criticism of a film a little bit when you realize just how much, like just backbreaking work and, and sacrifice went into making it. It does kind of like, okay, I'd be kind of a monster for, you know, <laughs> like just totally shitting all over the, your output here, but my right. God, it was not good. It was just, it, it, it was tedious. No likable <laughs> no, characters. Not a one, not a one. And then, and that's, I think that's a fundamental mistake that a lot of um, low budget horror movies and slasher movies make is that they, they treat their, they treat the cast or they treat the characters like just disposable fodder for the killer. And that's not, that's, 
that's not entertaining at all. No, it, it's not. It, it's it's one of those things where the thing. God, there's just a couple of like bizarre items that we had taken note of when we watched the film. One that stood out was one of the characters' name was Lando. Yeah, like, this 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 dude who looks like a, a the what is it the the wish version of Neil Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, <laughs> he's <laughs> plays this guy this character named Lando, and they mention his name. Either they mention his name or they they do a build up. Where's Lando at? I don't know. Lando should be over here, and then he finally shows up, and it's like. Oh, this is Lando. Okay. Yeah. Well, who's the next character on our list that we need to know the name of? And they kept bringing up new names and new people kept coming into the story. <laughs> that I, I, by the time the ending happened, which we are going to spoil it, the ending is, it, it was very, I think they're trying to do some meta moments from Scream as well. Yeah. And that, you know, a lot of people try to do that. I think there's some movies we've seen that could have benefited from those Scream type uh, meta moments, but this one was, it was hard pressed to, uh, shoehorn it in yeah and it's like <laughs> you know you're failing if you're reaching for scream and falling short i mean i you know i th i know it's blasphemous for a lot for some horror fans i don't understand the appeal of those movies i like the first one a little bit and then the rest of them like the last one that i went to in the theater i was like why did i go to this i know <laughs> i don't like these it's like it's kind of like it's it's almost on on me at that point it'd be right, like going yeah. to a park movie and being like well that was a piece of shit yeah you should have known better <laughs> no yeah I, I get it and then i i like the first scream a lot it it really subverted expectations and did a lot of yeah. cool stuff that you know not a, a lot of things had done up to that point but the 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 ending is just this girl maggie turns out to be the killer along with her partner lando and it 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 was they did more filmmaking killing the people than the actual filming <laughs> yeah. that went on when they were there yeah they i mean the filmmaker should have been happy that a that somebody stepped in and started actually giving them content like without it there <laughs> would be zero filming like you know right. and it's a kind of a missed opportunity because um you hear like sam raimi talk about uh in interviews talk about the original evil dead and what a just a a labor of love and what a just a soul crushingly d difficult shoot that was like the yeah. um like for instance the scene when the girl gets all chopped up and, yeah. and all of her parts are on the floor that required a false floor with a whole bunch of the the people under there operating the individual stuff and they were under there so long that people were falling asleep holding the puppet rods for like the <laughs> flopping hand and the legs yeah. and stuff it was just just brutally cold there was uh you know like animal feces all over the floor of the cabin when they first went in to start yeah. filming it was just this abandoned place and you know that kind of like inside baseball kind of stuff would have been fun but it didn't it didn't really have any of that kind of appeal for me yeah i'm wondering about you know it, it seems like and that was shot with film now these these film the movies nowadays are, are you di mostly digital if 90 90 digital if someone's yeah. using if someone's using actual film then they're trying to go for a real retro look and trying to really go back to the roots but the, yeah and, and it would be prohibitively expensive at this point I would think. oh yeah for sure and it, it, you think you know? I, I again, I, I admire the 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 suffering these these people did to to make this yeah. movie, and but you, I just don't see the love in a movie like this. Like no. Evil Dead, you know there was no. Evil Dead. And with Evil Dead, even the original Evil Dead, you can see the low pro some of the lower production values. Of it. You can see kind of like the fake you know skin, and it's not the total most high production in the world. But you can see the love. You can see you know, the horror and the, the extreme angles that were used for the camera. And it seems like this, I'm not just, I'm not just like shoveling, shoving getaway into this category. There's plenty of movies out there right now that are doing the same thing, but aren't showing yeah. the same love. You know, you're, you're putting these, these poor kids through the <laughs> ringer of yeah. you know, cold temperatures and dumping blood on them and putting them in, in situations that are very rough. And then to have the final, uh, what is it? The final product, be you know a mad piece of okay. Yeah, you, it's. It, I feel sorry for some of these people. I know <laughs> it, it was probably exciting for them at the time. 
and miserable too. And I would be disappointed myself. I'd be like, oh, I thought you would do so much more with what we filmed. Well, I mean, I'm sure you can relate, like, you know, just going out, doing the band thing. There got to be some nights to where it's like, man, this is this is really tough. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you, you're you're not always guaranteed a good good audience or yeah. or even that many people there, and you know, just there there can be all kinds of of stuff happens. A lot of times, as an artist, you're uh, the juice isn't worth the squeeze sometimes if you're yeah. gonna kind of break it down into dollars and cents. So I do I do respect the fact that they were doing all of this just for the love of the game and for whatever useless IMDb credit. I don't want to say it's useless, but that's yeah. basically, it's like, I'm on IMDb. It's, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people are. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's a crazy business for sure. And there, there's thousands, millions of movies of out there that we haven't seen that are just like this and probably worse. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to say, I, I'm not going to say I hated getaway. I, I, I didn't no. hate it. It was for me. It was it was fun to make fun of for sure. It, it gave us a lot of moments like that where we could just dig, 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 and riff, riff, yeah. riff. So I was happy about genuine that. Genuine laughter. There was genuine laughter to, during that one. Yeah, and but you know, I'm not going to say it was the best. It, it was you know, of course, if I had a, a rating or scale, I'd give it you know maybe two and a half stars out of five. Yeah, that's you know. that's probably fair. It's not you know like it it it's not bad enough to really totally just eviscerate but it's not good enough to recommend assuming you could even find it it's just that the, the uninspired yeah. titles makes it hard to find on its on the platform like it's on we watch it on amazon i just um it came up in my recommended so i you know yeah I and with that that day we sat down to watch it it took me a while to even find it yeah on, yeah, on Amazon Prime because I brought up a other bunch of movies <laughs> named Getaway, including the other 2021 that came out. Not 20, yeah. And eventually, I found it. It was, I was like, okay, this is the one that we were looking for. Uh, yeah, like this, this, this summer, they're all ending up on the cutting room floor. Like it didn't have any. <laughs> they missed so <laughs> many. They missed so many opportunities. It's yeah. Just, I think uh, I think another one of the things that it kind of falls on its face with is that they you think Maggie is, the you know, you, could, you always have to have the final girl or at least the yeah. final person. And yeah. they they went they kind of switched on its head where the, this girl that was shrill and dumb that we didn't like <laughs> at the beginning turns out to be the final girl at the end who's going to be offered up in butchery to these two killers. And you think. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, this is our final girl then. Someone that we never really cared about this entire time. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, in fact, I was hoping for a more positive outcome that, you know, she would get the jump on him. But no, she just kind of like laid there and got stabbed. And that's how it <laughs> pretty much ended. I think. How did it? Oh, no, the Lando gets killed too. I don't know. There, there's, some, there's some big thing. Lando and Maggie kind of. Uh, go at each other after killing off the last person they argue it's it was i just want to make sure i'm getting these character names right oh i don't i know i got lando right i know i got lando got lando (laughs) oh look i just looked on imdb and it brought up the other goddamn getaway film yeah 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 it like you gotta look for the one that was released in 2020 that'll help you narrow it down but we're not even we haven't even uh like touched on the acting prowess of uh what is his name Hank Stone what a make him up name that guy's got like he was <laughs> which uh you know like longtime listeners of the podcast will recognize him from uh last shift he was the the crotchety old uh cop in in last uh shift and oh kind that's of a right. high he point was, in the movie he was in this movie i forgot all about that he was in this movie <laughs> yeah and he's just basically like you kids ain't going up to that place it'd be haunted or whatever he said well, there, there's two doomsayers in this damn movie because there's that uh, that woman they ran into as well that was just like if you go up there you're gonna be killed you're gonna be it's doom do and i was wondering how, how do they know that because the killers were actually the kids themselves so yeah they obviously didn't have forewarning to know that the kids the two people in the group were killers so what lore are they going off of unless they're just saying this is camp crystal lake you know shit's going to happen 
But yeah, and then, cool. but and but then it makes sense because then you get killed by. Well, I mean, they turn that one on its head too. But yeah, like there's that it never comes up again. It's a total red hair. <laughs> yeah, oh, total red hair, Harry. It, it just makes you wonder, like, oh, okay. Well, I don't know. There, so I was pronouncing <laughs> I was pronouncing it wrong. Anyways, it wasn't Maggie. It's Maddie. 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 Yeah, Maddie. Maddie and Lando. <laughs> yeah. The amazing like, I, Lando. Yeah, like it, there's just I mean, I, it, I I'm kind of at a loss for words. There's not a hell of a lot to say here. They 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 go on their film project. They find a mask. It's just it's just it's so it's painfully mediocre. Like it, it even movies that kind of it, borderline irritated me that were way better was like that Christmas one that we watched. That Santa Bloody Santa or Christmas yeah. Bloody Christmas. Like that yeah. one was that was it had some irritating characters in it but it was it had just way more juice in it than this one there's just yeah, like sure. i don't know like uh you got to i don't know you got to spend more time on your script people it's it, it seems to be well, like yeah, one of the main years. criticisms of, of the movies that we review it's just it's, i i always yeah, yeah I, I agree i always think you, you have 10 you have a script that's been sitting in your desk for 10 years <laughs> let's pull it out maybe read through it again instead of just immediately <laughs> throwing a shot list on it and going out and filming it it's like yeah. no, let's work on it a little bit more <laughs> i know let's i mean like maybe maybe bring the the well because you said some of the actors helped punch up the dialogue so they probably had to do it right then and there it's like yeah. bring in people for a script read and have them I, you know a, a little easier said than done yeah, I realize easier said when you're, than, yeah you know like I, I realize it's easy for us to sit here and say how oh, your movie could have been better yeah. but i've said it before and i'll say it again it doesn't take any money to write a good script or, or to, to, to really dig through it and be real critical show it to somebody it's going to be like well this doesn't make any damn sense like, what's their motivation for killing anybody why why are yeah. they killing people like well what's, that was there's gotta that, be a reason that was the thing it's like i guess the reason that i could discern from it was that it was because of the breakup and there was some uh, infidelity going on there's something going on but to me that's not motivation enough to go on a killing spree and just you know slaughter everyone even screams yeah. even the mighty scream the, yeah. the motivation for the killers to go after sydney and her dad just because her dad had a affair with so-and-so's mom that was weak to me i was like is that yeah. enough reasoning to go on a killing spree to just because someone had an affair with your mo mother I mean, it, yeah, yeah, you're right. A lot of these slasher movies don't hold up to 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 that kind of criticism. Because same thing with, um, and I liked it a lot. But uh, same same kind of thing with Thanksgiving when they reveal what the killer's motivation is. It's like, okay, I kind of <laughs> get it, but the stuff that he did in that movie was just. Uh, just like you'd have to really want to do that to people it was beyond the pale right that was something that was lurking in his psyche for probably since he was a child and finally that was the catalyst to release it all because i don't I know believe anyone would go through those extremes just because your ex-lover who happened to be pregnant was murdered in a stampede at walmart I know it's like I yeah my it'd be like if my, you know my former boss screwed me out of my uh like unemployment I'm gonna roast him alive and <laughs> I may sign him up for some uh pornographic emails or put his name onto the dark web or something but other than that I mean you know send him one of those chocolate ding dongs in the mail like you know and <laughs> There's places just for that. That should be one of our sponsors. Actually. A flaming bag of poop. Yeah, yeah. Eat a dick, Incorporate. I think that it is. Uh, yeah, I think that's a thing. But uh, yeah, get away, get away, folks. Get it's, away. Uh, I I did I did look up some Amazon not Amazon Prime reviews on this. Nice. By the way. So the the the, the no, I found a one star. This is from LJ. Oh, oh oh. The title of it is oh so horrible. Except my cousin is pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> No, this is like actually probably not that bad for a college drama project, but not something for a real theater. My cousin, who wasn't taking drama courses, somehow was cast as one of the kids, and it's pretty funny. That's <laughs> that's the review. You couldn't even get a, a a good review from somebody that's adjacent to the movie. related to <laughs> related to the project. Uh, this is a, a three star review from Ikem I K E M, and he, this is one where Ikem. I guess it, oh, let me just read it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, he's got three stars. 
title is this movie barely made any sense <laughs> and it starts off it hardly has a meaningful interesting plot it's just a bunch of college college kids with their stereotypical young adult drama trying to survive, survive attacks by a killer the ending was totally unexpected and surprising though maddie was the master behind my mastermind behind the whole thing all along <laughs> just totally <Spoiler>. spoils <laughs> I, I just said I have trouble piecing together some of these reviews from people like the, the guy who's related to a person in the movie gave it a one star. But someone who thought it didn't make any sense gives it three stars and gives away the ending. So the, the Amazon review system is so funny. <laughs> well, it reminds me of this this buddy of mine, like, you know, a month after Six Sense was released, he was like, yeah, I just saw that movie. Which one was it? It was the one where um, it, it's the one where the dude from Die Hard is a ghost the whole time. It's like, dude, <laughs> well, I don't have to see it now. Hey, hey, spoilers, Clay, for, geez, we could have to put spoiler warning for Six Sense up on the... Yeah, that, that dude's yeah. a grandfather. The kid in that in that movie's probably a grandfather by now, I think, if you I, haven't seen it. I, I like uh, Haley Joel Osment. He, he's always, a, he's he's still in, like, stuff today. I heard him on Comedy yeah. Bang Bang. And they call him HJ. They call him Handjob Osment. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but he loves it. He rules it. But I, I, I digress. This movie, <laughs> get away... <laughs> Get Away is streaming on Amazon Prime. Now, this should yeah. not, again, be confused with Get Away, which came out in 2020 <laughs> as well, which involves a bunch of women going out into the middle of nowhere and getting killed. So look for the tile with a uh, with a scecrow with a knife in it. That's the one that you want. Is yeah. When you're, yeah. The look other for, Getaway. Yeah. The other Getaway has like a, a girl on the front with a knife behind her back. And it says get away, and then the tagline is to to survive, she must kill. Oh yeah, I, I I spent about ten minutes like writing down notes on that movie and realized this is <laughs> watch this one. How come I don't remember anything that happened? <laughs> None of these people seem familiar at all. <laughs> well, but yeah. I, I, I mean, the best way, the best recommendation that I can have is totally self-serving. If you want to watch the movie, watch our commentary with it. That's the way you're going to have fun. You know, if you don't have friends of your own, we'll uh, be your surrogate friends. For the yeah, day. definitely be your surrogate friends. We'll have your babies, too, if you need us to. I don't know how. Yes, this yes, yes. We have so a little I'll, test tube jars and jar, I'll push, and jars. I'll push it right out the old pee hole. <laughs> well, I guess that's about it for get away. Get away. Get away. And yeah, so that was our recommendation on it. Yeah, I don't think we entirely hated it too much no, but it's, it was just kind of a meh you know it's it's a low budgeter that you know you can have to suffer to get through if you watch <laughs> it by yourself there's, there's so much better ways to spend your time but yeah, by all right. means watch getaway if you want <laughs> all right until next time everyone i'm jason and that's uh clay over there peace we're out y'all we're cinematic suffering bye like subscribe bye, bye. like subscribe like subscribe yeah 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 like subscribe bye bye, like, subscribe. bye, -bye. Bye.